Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be looking at one of my most recent makes, which is this beautiful dress from the Pattern Preacher, which is, I believe, a relatively new indie sewing pattern company. They're based in the UK, and they actually reached out to me to see if I would like to try one of their patterns, which was really nice. They provided the pattern for free, um, in full disclosure. Um, so I'm here to give you an honest review of how I think um, this pattern went. Um, and I have to tell you, overall, it's very favorable. I love this dress. I really do. I used a, um, a rayon chalet. I think it's from Art Gallery. I actually don't remember who makes this fabric, but um, the fabric itself was kind of a pain to work with. Rayon chalet can be. It can be kind of like wiggly um, and then the uh, the fabric started to kind of run a bit and now that I think about it maybe I should have used a different needle but anyway um, and I fully lined this and I'm going to get to those details when we look at this on the dress form but um, just to give you an overview of this dress you have um, sort of like kind of a dropped shoulder here with some gathers um, these nice flowy sleeves We've got this V neckline, and then um, and the, in more detail again, this sh there's a sheared waist here, just in the front panel. And I had not actually done shearing before, so this gave me an opportunity to learn a new technique, and it went well. Um, I just, this dress is so comfortable, it feels so good. Uh, there's supposed to be a zipper in the back, I didn't put one in, I didn't feel the need, I don't like zippers. Um, I avoid them if I can. Oh well. <laughs> and um, I fully lined the dress. The pattern calls for facings and I tend to not like facings either because I find that they don't, they like to ride up more and just, they just don't sit well. So also this, um, this fabric was sort of more on the sheer side so I felt it was better to use a lining. But those are the things that I change just because of personal preference. Um, but I think for this pa for this pattern though, honestly, you might not need a zipper. Um, it's because of the elasticized waist and the open neckline that I feel like you might be able to get away with it. But that that's going to have to be a call on you just depending on your sizing. Um, so I think what we will do is head over to the dress form so I could show you in more detail, but I do want to let you know that uh, the Pattern Preacher was kind enough to give me a discount code for 20% off. The shipping is free. I do not make commission off of this, and this is my honest review of this pattern, and I am really grateful that they reached out to me because I love this dress. So let's go ahead and uh, go to the dress form. So we're gonna take a look at what comes in the pattern packet, and I don't have my pattern pieces here, but it's printed on some really nice white um, paper that's uh, substantial, it's not too flimsy, so that was really nice to see. Um, on the back, you can see they've got some sizing information, and they give you both centimeters and inches to help you figure out what size you need, depending on, or, region of the world you're in. Um, the glossary of terminology is included, and this is extremely helpful. Um, gives you definitions, and then also here will tell you how to make French seams because the pattern instructions call for French seams, which I personally did not do, but I like that they provide these instructions. And then here is the main instruction booklet for putting together this pattern. Um, this pattern, the Olivia dress, they say is for an adventurous beginner. I could go with that, but I think it might be more towards intermediate. And I say that because um, I feel like the instructions here could include more detail. And I say that simply because I'm used to working with um, patterns from like Tilly and the Buttons, which really focus on giving you detailed instructions from a beginner's point of view. That doesn't mean that you can't figure this out or you can't make it, not at all. I'm just pointing out what I think might be a little bit more helpful and as a, and that would be if they could just add a little bit more detail with their instructions and really try to approach it from the perspective of a true beginner. 
But again, this is for an adventurous beginner, so you have some skill. So you can make some arguments there. Sorry, I spilled coffee on that, and that is disgusting. But this is real life, so I'm not going to pretend that everything's perfect. So I really, I think this book is nice. I like that they talk about what you need. I like um, that they really go into what fabrics would work with this dress. And for example, polyester crepe, cotton satin, poly viscose, rayon. These are all great fabrics that would work with this dress. I think something that has good drape and is a little bit flowy would suit you just fine. Fabric preparation. I think that's great that they talk about that. And as I mentioned earlier, the um, finished garment and body measurements are given in both centimeters and in inches. But, and this is one of my critiques, and believe me, it might come across as nitpicky, is that when it talks about seam allowances, they only provide it in centimeters. I think it would be really helpful, just actually really convenient, if they also added the inch equivalent to that. Now, you can go, you can look on Google, you can have a little chart handy chart that does conversions. It's not a big deal. I'm just used to working with patterns that include both. I think it's just really nice. One thing that I did do, um, and they don't tell you to do in the instructions, which I think that they should, is to add stay stitching to your neckline, especially this V neckline, because the V, you know, is cut on the bias. So um, there's potential for it to stretch out when you're handling it. So I think um, stay stitching both your facing pieces, neckline pieces, and your bodice pieces would was really going to help you, especially if you are a beginner. When you're handling um, pieces that are cut on the bias, there is definitely potential for stretching out. So I think that they, I, I think that they should have included that in the instructions, and they didn't. And um, you know, it's not the end of the world, but I just think that uh, if you're sewing that, you might want to do that and then also with the skirt pieces if you look down here you can see that they're curved um if you want to be extra careful you could also add some stay stitching to those um just to ensure that you're not stretching your your fabric out and some fabrics are more prone to stretching out so you know that's a call um, that you'll have to make, but I I, I did do that on mine uh, on my pieces, so I just wanted to point that out. Um, here, let's not look at this page because it's got the it's got the. Thing. So this is an example of the instructions. I think the drawings are pretty decent. I think that again, some of them the instructions could have more detail and maybe just try to approach it a little bit for from a beginner's perspective. Um, I just think that it's helpful. And like I said, I'm used to it with other indie pattern companies. Like they really try to cover their bases because um, you may be intermediate, but there's always gonna be techniques that you haven't come across. And I just think when you are a little bit more, um, include more details, that is just more helpful. But this is just a gripe of mine and you could argue that that's not necessary, which is totally fine. This is just my my personal thought, but I think, honestly, I think it, it, this is fine. Um, another thing that I would point out, going back to the gross page, is that um, there's, they do kind of, they write this from the British perspective and that's totally fine because this is a UK company, but they refer to the, bobbin as the shuttle and at first I didn't know what they meant um because I've never heard the bobbin referred to as a shuttle so the bobbin is the shuttle so I had to I finally was like oh yes it's the bobbin so there's like these little kind of um things that I've picked up on which I think is is cute I mean I lived in the UK for a year but I never heard of shuttle <laughs> it's I don't know why just never talked about sewing when I was over there um so yeah I think I think that that's that's just my feedback I, uh, with, with this. Those are really the only critiques I have, and honestly, they're not deal breakers. They're just suggestions that I think could really just take this and make this, um, you know, super duper. I mean, it's great. I love it. I love this dress. I really do. The pattern came together very nicely. Um, I didn't have any issues with that. Um, I was able to understand the instructions just fine. Look, this is cute. Little pictures of the feet. 
Now that I haven't seen before. I really like that. This is this is really nice. I think overall, like their presentation is is really nice. Um, the pattern costs. That's another thing. It's a bit steep. It's sixteen pounds, so the equivalent right now is like twenty twenty one dollars. So. You, I do have a code for 20% off, and it is free shipping, so there's that. So you don't have to worry about that. So honestly, if I really like a dress and the pattern, the product is quality, I'm fine with spending the money. So I have to tell you that while 16 pounds or $20 might be a lot for a pattern, this is a dress that I love and I will make again. I really truly do like this pattern. I love my dress. So I, I do have overall, I have a favorable review of this pattern and I'm gonna look to um, try a, another pattern preacher pattern for you guys. Um, and hopefully they're gonna come out with some new ones. This is really lovely. So um, what we're gonna do now is just head over to my dress form. I have the dress on it. And I just wanna show you some details of my dress and how I kind of um, changed it up a bit from the actual pattern. So here she is in the corner of my room. And I'm just gonna kind of describe it up when we have it. Okay, here she is in the corner of my room. And uh, as you can see, this dress has a soft sort of V neckline. And coming over here to the shoulders, you can see that the shoulder seam is dropped. It's forward on the front bodice instead of being up here where the normal seam line is. And there's some soft gathers here. And uh, you can see that this, this is where the fabric is running and then in some other places too. Um, disappointed by that, but maybe if I had used a Microtex, maybe size 70 needle, a finer needle, that it wouldn't have done that, but I, I don't know. I don't even remember what needle I used, um, unfortunately. But let's just move down here to the waist, which is beautiful. Um, this is created, this sheared waistline is created by putting elastic thread in the bobbin and regular thread in the top. I found a video online that really helped me because I've never done this before and that video is really, really great. So this is actually super easy and I just think it provides such a flattering shape at the waist. And honestly, this dress would work well for any figure, I think. Um, the sleeves here, I don't really don't wear sleeves this length, but I really, really like it. Um, I just, I really like this dress. So I, I just love the kind of flowy sleeves and let's take a look at the back real quick. As you can see, well, there's no zipper here. There was supposed to be, but I figured with the sort of stretchy elasticated waist and the open neckline that I didn't need a zipper. I try to avoid zippers as much as possible and sure enough, I didn't need a zipper. Um, so as I mentioned, I don't like facings, so I lined this dress. This dress, um, has the pattern has two pieces for the bodice. You've got the front bodice on top and then you've got this sort of long rectangle for the sheared waistband. And so what I did for my front bodice lining piece is I just extended the bodice to account for this piece. What I didn't do is um, account for the fact that the front bodice will also narrow because as you, as you sew it to this elasticated piece, it's going to become more narrow. And so I didn't account for that. Um, my bodice ended up being a little bit too wide. So when I sewed it to the skirt, I had to kind of gather it in a little bit. No big deal, but if I do this again, I'm going to definitely account for that. And then for the skirt pieces, I did shorten the lining by a couple of inches. Um, yes, I haven't hemmed it yet, a little bit lazy, but so for the skirt, I adjusted skirt pieces, I adjusted it by shortening for the lining. And then the back bodice piece, I didn't do anything to the lining pattern piece. 
I didn't need to. But let's take a look at the back real quick. It is just a super cute dress. I'm really pleased with it. I, I'm really happy with how I, it turned out. In fact, my cousin says this is one of her most favorite pieces that I've ever made. And I really just feel great when I wear it. I feel girly, I guess, and feminine and whatever you want to call it. So yeah, I just, I just feel really good when I wear this dress. It's comfortable. The fabric is really comfortable. Even though it has run, I still really like the fabric. I don't think you can see this unless you get right up there and look. So hopefully nobody's going to be doing that. But yeah, so this is my make for the Pattern Preacher Olivia dress. I thoroughly, I'm very happy with how this dress came out and I think you should definitely give it a go. And they were kind enough to give me a discount code for 20% off and free shipping from the UK. So take advantage of that if you are interested. And uh, if you do, let me know how it turns out. And I really hope that you enjoyed this review. Thanks for watching.